airplane was becoming unflyable. My father and his co-pilot decided they needed to eject. <clears throat> After discussing it, the co-pilot was able to do so successfully. But my father was not able to get out. And he remained with the aircraft as it went down and impacted the beach. He was less than a month from completing his tour and we had orders to Hickam Air Force Base in Hawaii. My sisters and I arranged at the time at age from 26 to 12. The 12 year old was me. Old enough to know and understand something about the dangers of war and the dangers my father was facing, but definitely not old enough to know how to grow up without him. But with the perspective of time, maturity, and my faith, I actually feel lucky. I had a dad who characterized the ideals of integrity and service and excellence, the very core values espoused by the Air Force I serve today. And I had the chance to know him for 12 years of my life. His impact on me has been every bit as strong and present, both during his life and since that fateful day. He is and has always been my role model and my hero. Our mother and each of my sisters dealt with the loss in differing ways. And a few years ago, my sister Gail decided to capture the story of my dad through the eyes of each of us in a book. It was a five year, I think it was five years, labor of love. And it was entitled, it is entitled, Colonel Worley's Quarters, Gail Speaking. As this was the proper manner in which we were taught to answer the phone. For each son, daughter, or family member present here tonight, I know there's a story just like mine, a life-changing story, a story of tragedy, of loss, relationships cut short, dreams unfulfilled. But these stories like mine are also stories of honor, of courage, of duty, pride, sacrifice for something greater than self. And yes, there are even stories of hope. Hope for a future in which I, the ideals of freedom and democracy flourish unchallenged as core to our American way of life. Hope for a world in which war is unnecessary as an instrument of national influence. Hope for each survivor as he or she works to live a life that honors the fallen. And hope for all service members who proudly serve and stand on the shoulders of those who have gone before us and who have given the last full measure of devotion. Finding meaning in tragedy can be difficult and sometimes it takes much time to fully understand the profound impact of losing one's father. For me, there were many, many impacts, and no, I have no doubt my father's death shaped the rest of my life in countless ways. For one, we didn't move to Hawaii. Uh, so that's, that's a big negative right there. <laughs> but because we stayed in the place we, we did, and we were at at the time, which was down in Hampton, Virginia, I continued going to school, and as was pointed out, I met my wife-to-be, didn't know it at the time, but I met my soulmate, Lori. And I'm sure uh, many of you can relate to the time after my father died was a time of struggle for me, and it wasn't a time that I did very well in school or that I was a particularly good citizen in the city I was living in, even at 12 years old. Juvenile delinquent comes to mind, but <laughs> but meeting Lori and then uh, starting to think about a future changed my life because we had stayed uh, in the same place. I decided then early in my high school years that I wanted to follow in my father's footsteps and serve in the Air Force. Without a doubt, this decision was motivated by my observations of him my admiration for him, his passion for service, his love of flying, his skill, his 
compassion for people. His legacy gave me hope and a purpose. I share these reflections because I, I didn't get to sit in a sharing circle earlier today, for one, and Tony gave me the podium for a little while. But more importantly, uh, doing so, I know, is directly in concert with uh, one of the foundational precepts on which Sons and Daughters in Touch is founded. That sons and daughters of men killed or missing in action during the Vietnam War had the opportunity to connect with one another, to share their stories, to encourage one another, and engage in activities which promote healing, and ultimately to honor and always remember our loved ones who served in that war. On its 20th anniversary, commend, I commend SDIT for the resources and opportunities it has provided to do all of these things I've mentioned and so much more. Two of my sisters, Gail and Vicki, participated in the 2003 trip to Vietnam. With over, I guess, about 70 or so other SDIT members to visit the locations where our fathers fought and died or went missing. What an incredibly <coughs> impactful uh, experience it was for them personally and through them sharing with us our entire family. I wish I could have accompanied them. This type of experience simply would not be feasible without an organization like SDIT. The Father's Day Rose Ceremonies, in which I've had the privilege to uh, participate in a couple of times, are incredibly powerful. As personal messages from family members are read and roses placed proudly along the wall, forming a seemingly endless sea of beauty and fragrance, in honor of the names engraved thereon. SDIT, as I know you well know, is recognized, works with major uh, organizations, veterans organizations, and as was mentioned earlier today, impressively lauded for its work in a unanimous resolution for the United States House of Representatives on this its 20th anniversary. Perhaps even more encouraging than ever, as the organization evolves to take on new, new efforts, is the fact that SDIT members are using their experiences now to mentor and assist sons and daughters who have lost their fathers or mothers in today's wars. To me, this kind of effort falls squarely into the character of what Sons and Daughters in Touch is all about. 20 years of reaching out, 20 years of growing, 20 years of connecting, 20 years of healing. Congratulations, sons and daughters in touch, on your 20th anniversary. You have directly impacted the lives of over 3,000 sons and daughters across the nation and, and growing. And I know that through the continued efforts of the dedicated people in this room and so many others, that we'll be able to reach out and support many, many more sons and daughters uh, in the future. I thank you very much for having me tonight. Thank you, Rob. I, I don't think we'll have that same kind of introduction for General Casey tomorrow. So. <laughs>